Today, celebrity cooks are part of the landscape in our everyday lives. Though the origins of modern celebrities in home cooking had a flourishing period in the Victorian era as well. One of the more famous and prosperous cooks during the Victorian period was named Agnes Marshall. Today, some researchers call her the Julia Child plus Martha Stewart of that time. The 1% of Victorian English households belonging to the upper class and 15% in the middle classes looked to her for elegant cooking advice and extravagant creations. Now, let us explore the fascinating life of this celebrity businesswoman, one of the most famous cookery writers of the Victorian age. A Victorian era celebrity cook. Agnes Bertha Marshall was born on the 24th of August, 1852 in Hagerston, East London. She achieved extraordinary success as a female entrepreneur, food equipment inventor, and gifted cook. Her moniker, Queen of Ices, came about because of her legendary work with frozen desserts. She also played a major role in popularizing ice cream in England, bringing its regular consumption into everyday life as opposed to a delicacy for the wealthy. In addition, many regard Agnes Marshall as the inventor of the edible modern ice cream cone, with her recipe published in 1888. How, where, and when Agnes Marshall learned to cook is still a great mystery. One article which appeared in the Pall Mall Gazette stated she made a thorough study of cookery since she was a child. In the opening to her first book, Agnes Marshall says she obtained practical training and lessons through several years from leading English and continental authorities. However, her background and financial status puts these claims into great question, with her career most likely beginning as a scullery maid. Though with determination and talent, she eventually became a cook in gentleman's service. The startling business career of Agnes Marshall started in January 1883 after purchasing the Lavenue Cooking School and rebranding it as the Marshall School of Cookery. After its first year, Agnes Marshall was lecturing classes of up to 40 people five to six times a week. A few years after its founding, she was employing specialists to assist teaching upwards of 2,000 students at this renowned culinary school. Here, fine English and French cuisine was instructed, and it became one of only two important cooking schools in London, along with the National Training School of Cookery. These fascinating lectures included curry making taught by a British colonel that had served in India, and the art of fine French cuisine as instructed by a graduate of Le Cordon Bleu. This cooking institution, attended by well-to-do housewives and servants alike, laid the foundation for her business empire, assisted by her husband Alfred. Starting in 1885, she wrote and self-published the first of four cookbooks, called The Book of Ices. Unlike most contemporaries, these books contain Mrs. Marshall's own recipes, which she also tested before including them in her works. This first cookbook was favorably received, though at a local interest level. Wishing to reach a wider audience with her second book, Agnes Marshall began a promotional tour of England in August 1888 called A Pretty Luncheon, where she cooked meals on stage with the help of assistants. This nationwide tour also promoted her cooking school and other businesses like food supplies, molds, and equipment. These promotional shows became a great success, with audiences reaching up to 600 attendees. As a result, Agnes Marshall received national acclaim as one of the best and most recognized cooks in England. Another positive consequence of this tour was that her second book, titled Mrs. A. B. Marshall's Book of Cookery, published in May 1888, achieved great success, selling over 60,000 copies. It was in this book that she revealed her recipe for the edible ice cream cone, a first in the English language. Her third book, Mrs. A. B. Marshall's Larger Cookery Book of Extra Recipes, came out in 1891, focusing more on high-end cuisine than her second book. Her final book, a follow-up to the first, was titled Fancy Ices and published in 1894. Another significant publication started in 1886 by Agnes Marshall and her husband was the weekly recipe, food opinion, and general interest paper titled The Table. Agnes Marshall was also a brilliant food equipment inventor. The technology she conceptualized and brought to the public included the revolutionary Marshall's patent freezer and the use of liquid nitrogen for freezing ice cream. Agnes Marshall also developed over 1,000 molds for ice cream, an ice breaking apparatus, and an ice cave, which was an insulated box for storing ice cream. With her husband, they operated businesses which retailed cooking equipment, an agency which supplied domestic staff, and a food retailer supplying spices and flavorings. Her charitable deeds included Christmas dinners for the less fortunate and providing warm soup during the winter time in 1889 London. A Victorian Recipe Genius in Her Opinions Agnes Marshall influenced the way middle and upper class Victorians prepared food dishes and which meals they chose to consume. Her recipes were detailed, dramatic, and really worked as quality creations. 
As a result, they often required a staff of kitchen help to prepare. Elegant dinner parties featured ice cream which used her molds to make enticing vegetable and fruit shapes. People were constantly amazed with the variety of flavors contained within her recipes. For example, cucumber ice cream was an exciting combination of cucumbers, lemon peel, vanilla, pistachio, sugar, and cream. Victorians wishing to take their ice cream delights to a new level created her Marshall's Duck Ice Cream, consisting of foie gras, aspic, and cayenne pepper. Of course, both of these dishes would use her famous ice cream molds, showing her brilliance as a culinary entrepreneur, similar to Martha Stewart. Mrs. Marshall even had a recipe for asparagus ice cream, along with her mold and ice cream freezer for preparation. Beyond frozen food, she also supplied recipes for dishes such as anchovy biscuits and cream of rabbit and aspic for that special Victorian dinner party. Agnes Marshall's opinions on food and societal issues were just as prominent during this period. From the lack of quality nourishment on trains and dislike for canned food to support for women's rights, her articles were read by many. Equally intriguing were her predictions on technology in the future. For example, she believed motor cars would revolutionize trade and facilitate the traveling of the future. She also predicted that in the future, refrigerated trucks would transport fresh food across the nation, and larger stores would put smaller provision stores out of business. Tragically, while still in her prime years, she suffered from a horse fall in 1904, never fully recovering from this accident. In the following year, on July the 29th, 1905, Agnes Marshall passed away from cancer at the Towers, Pinner, a great estate she bought in 1891. Agnes Marshall made home cooking both popular and fascinating for many women in Victorian England. Without standard modern cooking devices, she taught them how to make extraordinary dishes and complicated delicacies using her innovative inventions. Unfortunately, after her passing, the Marshall food legacy experienced declining fortunes. The very technological advances Agnes Marshall marveled like refrigerators meant a middle class woman did not require many servants to maintain a household. Middle-class homes evolved to preparing less complicated dishes, which also played a key role in her empire's decline. After being sold in 1921, these Marshall Ventures were formed into a limited company. However, this company seized operations in 1954. Remarkably, the name of Agnes Marshall is experiencing a resurgence today in modern cooking and cookery circles. Thank you for supporting us at Victoria to Modern. Please be sure to watch another episode shown at the end of this video. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and click the notification button so we can create more exciting content. I wish you good tidings as we remember that sharing knowledge has been a noble deed throughout the ages.